Hello there, this is Alt24 News live from Algiers coming up next in our news program. Nearly 24 million Algerians voters are called to the polls today Saturday to elect their representatives to the Communal and Provincial People's Assemblies Plus. Saudi-led coalition fighting in Yemen said early today Saturday it launched airstrikes on military targets in the Yemeni capital Sana'a, asking civilians not to gather around or approach the targeted sites. And finally, the English Channel is fueling tensions between the UK and France over how to stop migrants from crossing the world's busiest waterway in small boats. Hello again and welcome. First in our top story is nearly 24 million voters are called to the polls today Saturday to elect their representatives to the Communal and Provincial People's Assemblies, a ballot which constitutes the culmination of the institutional building process and should mark the transition to a new governance of communities to give a strong impetus to local development. As part of his electoral duties, the President of the Republic, Adil Majid Taboon, accomplished Saturday at the level of the Ahmed Urwa School in Stawali, west of the capital Algiers, his electoral duty in the company of his family. Hundreds of Jordanians went on protests on Friday condemning the agreement with the Zionist entity in a step saying it went closer to normalizing relations with the Zionists as the latter continued to occupy Palestinian territories. Opponents also argued that the agreement would force Jordan to rely on its neighbor, Islam Seeds. Around 3,000 demonstrators gathered on Friday in the Jordanian capital to protest against a water for energy agreement between Jordan and Zionist entity. The agreement would be one of the largest cooperation projects since the country signed a peace deal 27 years ago. Jordanian police arrested 36 university students who were peacefully protesting against the agreement. Under the deal, Jordan would receive 200 million cubic meters of desalinated water from Zionist entity in return for 600 megawatts of electricity generated from UAE-funded solar energy plant in Jordan. The project's declaration of intent was signed on Monday in Dubai by Jordan's water minister, Zionist entity's energy minister, and the United Arab Emirates climate change minister in the presence of U.S. climate envoy John Kerry. The agreement intends to address Jordan's dire need for water and the Zionist entity's goal to expand its renewable energy mix. It's worth mentioning that Jordan is currently the second most water-scarce country in the world, according to UNICEF. The Saudi-led coalition fighting in Yemen said early today Saturday it launched airstrikes on military targets in the Yemeni capital Sana'a, asking civilians not to gather around or approach the targeted sites. On the other hand, the Houthis have repeatedly launched cross-border attacks on Saudi Arabia using drones and missiles. Washington expressed its deep concern about the military escalation in Ethiopia and called for urgent negotiations on the crisis. U.S. State Department spokesperson Ned Price said Secretary Anthony Blinken is deeply concerned about the military escalation in Ethiopia and calls for urgent negotiations on the crisis. Zahra Farjani. Washington is insisting that diplomacy is the only option to stop the conflict in Ethiopia between government forces and the fighters of the Tigray Liberation Front. As the State Department spokesperson Ned Price said in a statement late on Friday, Secretary Blinken expressed grave concern about a worrying sign of military escalation in Ethiopia and emphasized the need to urgently move to negotiations. The U.S. Embassy in Addis Ababa said earlier that the security situation in Ethiopia continues to deteriorate, urging Americans to leave immediately using available trading options. While the battles are escalating between the Ethiopian army and the Tigray Liberation Front, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed said in his first appearance from the fight in France, 
that his army achieved what he described as great victories on the Tigray front. Tigray forces threatened to advance towards the capital Addis Ababa or try to cut off the road linking landlocked Ethiopia to the region's largest port in Djibouti. The front also announced the continuation of fighting on all fronts, appealing to the people of a far region to get rid of the groups working for the government. The war has caused significant humanitarian repercussions in Ethiopia, and in this context, the United Nations World Food Programme said that the number of people in need of food assistance in northern Ethiopia has risen to more than 9 million compared to about 7 million last September. President Joe Biden announced on Friday that his administration would ban travel from eight African countries beginning on Monday, as the U.S. seeks to prevent the spread of a new COVID-19 variant dubbed Omicron. A statement from the White House indicated that travel from South Africa, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Namibia, Lesotho, Estonia, Mozambique and Malawi would be temporarily halted. Still with the same story, the discovery of a new and more infectious coronavirus variant by South African health authorities has sparked a strong reaction across the world. With a number of countries banning travelers from several southern African countries, the World Health Organization announced it has designated the newly identified coronavirus variant as a variant of concern named Omicron. Let's follow this report. Omicron is the new variant that worries the world, potentially very contagious and with multiple mutations. This new South African variant has apparently already gained ground. Several countries like Belgium, Botswana and Hong Kong have announced that they have already detected at least one case on their territories. Based upon the information that we have, particularly from South Africa, um, they have advised WHO that this variant should be classified as a variant of concern. So today we are announcing B11529 as a variant of concern named Omicron. Omicron's arrival comes as Europe is already facing a fifth wave. The United Kingdom, France, Italy and Cyprus banned flights from South Africa and neighboring countries as of Friday. The United States, Canada and Brazil have suspended travel to and from Southern Africa to curb its progress. Deemed of concern by World Health Organization, this variant has a large number of mutations, some of which are highly contagious. At this stage, scientists still do not know whether the current vaccine constitutes an effective shield against the Omicron variant, but the current indications are rather pessimistic. So Omicron uh, B11529 is named as a variant of concern because it has some concerning properties. Um, this variant has a large number of mutations, and some of these mutations have some worrying characteristics. Right now, there are many studies that are underway. There's a lot of work that is ongoing in South Africa and in other countries to better characterize the variant itself in terms of transmissibility, in terms of severity, and any impact on our countermeasures like the use of diagnostics, therapeutics, or vaccines. So far, there's little information, but those studies are underway. So we need researchers to have the time to carry those out. And WHO will inform the public um, and our partners and our member states as soon as we have more information. The German laboratory BioNTech has announced that it is studying this new variant and expect at the latest in two weeks for the first results of studies, which will determine whether it is capable of escaping vaccine protection. The first European case of the new B11529 variant has been detected in Belgium as the UK imposed new restrictions on travel from South Africa and five other nearby countries because of the risk that vaccines may not protect against it. The case was identified in an unvaccinated young adult women who developed mild flu-like symptoms 11 days after traveling and had no links with South Africa or other countries in Southern Africa. The English Channel is fueling tensions between the UK and France over how to stop migrants from crossing the world's busiest waterway in small boats. Politicians on both sides of the channel are blaming their counterparts for failing to prevent Wednesday's tragedy. Nabil Khazini. It seems that tensions between France and the UK have escalated after a letter sent publicly by Boris Johnson to the French President Emmanuel Macron. The latter criticized the British Prime Minister over what he called his failure to act seriously to find a solution to the cross-channel migrant crisis. I'm surprised by the methods when they are not serious. You don't communicate from one leader to another on issues such as these by a tweet that are made public. 
We're not whistleblowers. Come on. Come on. Following an accident on Wednesday when 27 migrants died off the coast of Calais in the largest tragedy of its kind in the Channel. Boris Johnson wrote in his letter to France that he had long been profoundly concerned about a tragedy in the English Channel and such a catastrophe has now happened. Johnson also asked France to immediately start taking back all migrants who arrived to England. The French government spokesman Gabriel Attal called the letter threadbare in its substance and completely inappropriate in its form. He added that the idea of sending back migrants to France is obviously not what is needed to resolve this problem. French Interior Minister Gérald Darmanin also reacted to Boris Johnson's request by cancelling the visit of his British counterpart Priti Patel to a meeting on migration scheduled for Sunday. The Channel crisis has added more tensions between Paris and London following several bilateral issues unsolved after Britain decided to leave the European Union. French President Emmanuel Macron and Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi in the presence of Italian President Sergio Mattarella signed a rare treaty of enhanced bilateral cooperation to strengthen relations damaged in recent years by diplomatic disputes. Hussein Berkan. France and Italy signed on Friday amid great media coverage in Rome a treaty of enhanced bilateral cooperation in order to strengthen relations damaged in recent years by diplomatic dispute. And in an atmosphere of European transformation with the departure of the German Chancellor Angela Merkel. The treaty was initially at the Corinale Presidential Palace by French President Emmanuel Macron and Prime Minister Mario Draghi in the presence of the Italian President Sergio Mattarella. Draghi stated in a joint press conference with his counterpart, President Emmanuel Macron, that the treaty marks a historic moment in the relations between the two countries and highlighted the importance of having a policy of managing migrant flows. This enhanced cooperation treaty that we signed this morning marks a historic moment in the relationship between our countries. Regarding migration, we recognize the need for a policy of managing migration flows and asylum shared by the European Union based on principles of responsibility and solidarity. We are committed to protecting our agricultural systems. On this matter, we reach the common position. It is a fundamental issue for our two countries. For his part, President Emmanuel Macron highlighted a major project of common European interests. We have noted a common vocation through major projects of common European interest, whether in hydrogen, the cloud or space. And this morning, we have noted an important agreement on space, which will give new impulses to this industry, which is so important for both our civil and military activities. And from clarification, in the field of launchers to new projects, we are also writing a very important page in our space cooperation. The Treaty of Enhanced Bilateral Cooperation, called the Corinale Treaty, is very rare in Europe. And it is only the second that France concludes after the LZ Treaty initialized in 1963 with Germany and enhanced by the Treaty of Aichen in 2019. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida vowed at his first parade of forces today, Saturday, to consider all options, including acquiring the ability to strike enemy bases. Kishida also pledged to create a stronger self-defense forces to protect the country amid growing threats from China and North Korea. In the U.S., Black Friday witnesses less shoppers than usual in malls and fewer discounts as sales shift online. And in Europe, activists blockaded Amazon warehouses on Friday to call attention to Amazon's business practices and wastefulness of Black Friday. Yesterday was the first Black Friday since the corona vaccination became widely available in the United States before the pandemic. As more Americans returned to outlets on one of the busiest shopping days of the year, the offers were among the least generous in years. And as stated in Salesforce.com, the average discount on products purchased in the last few days was only 24% in the U.S. 
Rob Ferguson, the vice president of Salesforce.com Retail, confirmed in an interview that the start of this year's holiday season has come to the lowest average discount rates that we have ever seen in recent history. Well, I came here because I figured since it was Black Friday they'd have the new Switch OLED in stock, but they didn't. So I'm just going to go home, I guess. The Target New York store has less than half as many people compared to Black Fridays prior to the coronavirus outbreak. And according to mother and daughter shopping at Texas Mall on Friday, there was no pushing and shoving and the usual crowds on Black Fridays. In Europe, activists blockaded Amazon warehouses on Black Friday, protesting against Black Friday's wastefulness, along with Amazon's business practices' impacts on environment and negligence of workers' rights. In the UK, activists blockaded the entrance to Amazon's warehouse in Tilbury. And in Scotland's Amazon distribution, Dunfermline, Line, 20 rebels locked themselves together and stopped trucks from entering and leaving. As a response, Amazon said it takes responsibilities extremely seriously, but did not directly address the protests. Saudi King Salman bin Abdulaziz has issued orders allowing non-Umrah worshippers to perform the Kaaba encircling on the first floor of the Grand Mosque. The relaxed measures includes in and in distancing for worshippers in the two holy mosques in Mecca and Medina, where full capacity has been reinstated. However, worshippers are required to continue wearing masks at both mosques. And finally, here everything you need to know about the world of entertainment in this report. Bulgaria revealed yesterday that Intelligent Music Project, an international rock collaboration, will sing the song Intention at Eurovision 2022 in Torino, becoming the first country to release its Eurovision 2022 entry. The band will be led by the rock legend Ronnie Romero. For Eurovision 2022, the group will feature a series of well-known stars, most notably Ronnie Romero of heavy metal group Richie Blackmore's Rainbow. Costume makeup is not a new artwork, but is developing along with technological innovations and people nowadays have more access to makeup and prosthetics, allowing them to create the unthinkable. TikTok's Laddie Challenge, in which influencers put on makeup to the trendy song, all all the truth. made costume makeup go more viral than ever. The challenge consists in changing appearance from a traditional look to a bolder and a scarier one. Kate Middleton is a huge fan of monochromatic styling, often creating coat and knitwear combos in tonal hues to ensure she always looks polished. The Duchess has replaced her shift dresses with neutral sweaters and coats, paired with sleek pants to create a finished uniform that makes dressing for a busy mother of three kids easier. Kate wore a pink coat, roll neck sweater and tailored trousers and suede pumps for going to Nower Hill High School in Harrow. Music. The family movie Encanto topped the box office on Wednesday, surpassing Lady Gaga's House of Gucci. Other films for older crowds have failed to generate much ticket sales. It will rank as a relative victory at a moment when ticket sales are in depression. And now let's have a reminder of our main top stories. Nearly 24 million Algerian voters are called to the polls today Saturday to elect their representatives to the communal and provincial people's assemblies. Saudi-led coalition fighting in Yemen said early today, Saturday, it launched airstrikes on military targets in the Yemeni capital, Sana'a, asking civilians not to gather around or approach the targeted sites. The English Channel is fueling tensions between the UK and France over how to stop migrants from crossing the world's busiest waterway in small boats. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.